For years, stoners in America have envied Denmark as somehow uniquely the land of the free. Well, something seems to be rotten in that state as we learn from Adam versus the Man correspondent Luke Rudowski. This is Luke Rudowski reporting in Amsterdam. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the Hague here, the Dutch government, has actually implemented a new law in this year that would make it illegal for tourists to smoke marijuana in coffee shops. Uh, this is supposed to be implemented by the end of this year, and the law also states that any Dutch citizens who wishes to smoke marijuana has to register and sign up for a new government ID that would track and register every time they use marijuana. Now, why in the hell they would do this in Amsterdam and Holland? I really don't know. Why the hell is your government doing this? <laughs> These are very dark days in Europe, not just in the Netherlands. It kind of defies really rational thought. If that pass were to come into effect, it's simple. I mean, personally, I would not go to coffee shops anymore. I do not want to have my personal details registered by the government as a cannabis user yeah. in the way that no one should. That is just a way to target the group out. It makes me think of one specific social group at the beginning of World War II that suffered a lot for registering for the good of all. It's disgraceful that people who have got no knowledge of cannabis at all can dictate to the rest of the world what we can or cannot take. It's very simple. The more repressive an approach is, the more it benefits the underground market, uh, and the less it benefits the end user and even less the taxpayer. In Holland, the tax, the income tax for a coffee shop is 52%, which is actually more than double the out of a traditional business. Um, to give you an idea, the government gets more than 400 million euros a year from the coffee shop industry, um, which they can then use to fund whatever they want. I'm not going to go into that. Um, but if they diminish that and they restrict it to the Dutch population, those revenues will go down. The fight against illegal cultivation will be increasing. The only person to pay that is going to be the taxpayer. What's going to happen when marijuana will be illegal for tourists? The problems are obviously uh, criminal gangs against getting involved, um, there's black market money being involved. Um, any association with gangs is not a good association, it's a bad association. Portugal with decriminalization since 2001 has shown that heroin use has gone down, which was the biggest problem. Those are the hard drugs. And what's, what's interesting, in the United States, 40% of Americans use marijuana. In the Netherlands, 20% of the citizens here use marijuana, according to polls that we heard. Yeah, it's even less. It's 5% as, as uh, habitual users. 20% is just like recreational, like from time to time. It's one of the lowest rates in Europe. Not the lowest, but amongst the lowest. What did the local government do in response to this national law? Amsterdam City Council have voted completely against introduction of the ban of tourism. So it seems that the coffee shops here will be open for at least five more years to tourists. This is the news we had on Friday. We'd like to pass this on to the world because for us this is tremendous news. And for us it's a, a step in the right direction and we have beaten the government from this point of view. It's not over yet and we're fighting it every single day. And the fact that they uh, push it back by five years, as much as it is a celebration, I have a lot of colleagues that were celebrating, uh, didn't make me smile much because all in all it's just a good way for people to start forgetting and other laws to come into effect. Um, it's not really a step forwards at all. It's just we've avoided a huge step back. That's it. The city council and the mayor have actually postponed this measure to 2015 with new laws. But at least Amsterdam will still have its museums. And as we are fortunate enough to find out from his travels, Luke is an extreme lightweight and was certainly not partaking himself, but definitely enjoying his time overseas. We have a lot more uh, work coming out of him that we're looking forward to uh, over the next week, including the package coming together on uh, his interviews regarding concentration camps in Poland. So.